Hey friends, grab your Bible because it's time for Sunday School with Miss Vicki. Last week we started talking about the Judges, which have their own book of the Bible. We're going to keep talking about the Judges for this week too. Last week we learned about a judge named Deborah. And if you remember, judges in the Old Testament time weren't the people who sat on in the courtroom with the black, um, the black robe on and the gavel. Those kind of judges are what we think of today, but judges in the Old Testament were really more like uh, warriors who led their people into battle. Um, so we learned about Deborah last week, and um, we learned that if God's people obey him, their life is going to be good, isn't it? But if God's people disobey him, what's going to happen? Their life's going to be not so good. So when, when they are disobeying God, it's usually they're worshiping other gods. God says, mm -mm, that's not okay. You worship me and you worship me alone. So God sends a neighboring village over to where the Israelites are living. And sometimes they enslave them. Sometimes they are really mean to them. Sometimes there's a great battle. And then what happens is the people cry out to God and God says, okay, you have to start worshiping me again. And then this judge encourages people to start worshiping God and people start worshiping God and the judge leads everybody into battle and then there's a victory and yay, God, and everyone's great. And then they forget and they start worshiping idols again and then they, God sends the neighboring village. Okay. So it happens over and over and over and over and over again. So here's a phrase you're going to hear often in the Old Testament. This is in Judges 6.1. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. You'll see that a lot. It'll say, once again, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. Yet again, the Israelites forgot their promise to God and started worshiping idols. The Israelites started worshiping idols and forgot about worshiping God. That happens all the time in the Old Testament. So many of the stories start out that way. So here's what happens. <clears throat> the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places in caves, mountains, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, marauders from Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east would attack Israel, camping in the land and destroying the crops as far away as Gaza. Can the Israelites just stop at the grocery store and get some more food? The only food they have is what they grow so if people are taking all of their crops and their animals, there's nothing left for them to eat. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. These enemy hoarders, coming with their livestock, tents, and tents, were as thick as locusts. They arrived on droves of camels, too numerous to count. And they stayed until the land was stripped bare. So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. What's God going to do? He's going to bring up a judge. And the man he chooses for the job this time is, is someone named Gideon. So remember Gideon's job as a judge is kind of the, uh, the, the warrior, the one who's going to charge and lead everybody into battle. So Gideon gets his army together, and um, I want you to think if, if you were going to be leading people into battle, what are some things you would want? You'd want some weapons, right? You want some food to feed everybody. You need some soldiers, though, don't you? Would you want a lot of soldiers or just, just a couple of soldiers? You want a lot of soldiers, right? Well, let's see what happens in our story today. So we are in Judges chapter 7. Gideon and his army got up early and went as far as the spring of Herod. The armies of Midian were camped north of them in the valley near the hill of Morah. Okay, so if we, we could find that on a map if we needed to. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many warriors with you. You have too many warriors with you. You have too many warriors with you. That can't be right. Why would God say that? You have too many warriors? Here's what God says next. If I let all of you fight the Midianites, the Israelites will boast to me that they saved themselves by their own strength. 
So God wants to remind the Israelites that it's on God's strength that they win. Therefore, tell the people, whoever is timid or afraid may leave this mountain and go home. So 22,000 of them went home. 22,000 left because they were timid or afraid, leaving only 10,000 who were willing to fight. Well, that's a pretty big number still. All right. But the Lord told Gideon, the Lord told Gideon, there are still too many. Bring them down to the spring and I will test them to determine who will go with you and who will not. So Gideon brings his warriors down to the stream here. Okay. And how many are there? There are 10,000. Is that going to fit on my flannel board? No. We have to use our imagination. Okay. Let's see. There's someone getting a drink. All right, here's our soldiers. All 10,000. All right. When Gideon took his warriors down to the water, the Lord told him, divide the men into two groups. In one men, put all those who cup water with their hands and lap it up with their tongues like dogs. Okay, so people who cup water in their hands and then they drink it like they're a dog. That's one group. In the other group, put all those who kneel down and drink with their mouths in the stream. Only 300 of the men drank from their hands. All the others got down on their knees and drank with their mouths in the stream. Okay. The Lord told Gideon, with these 300 men, I will rescue you and give you victory over the Midianites. Send all the others home. So he started with 32,000 soldiers. And now he has 300 soldiers. Well, so Gideon collected the provision and ram's horns of the other warriors and sent them home. But he kept the 300 men with him. All right, well, we got to send a whole bunch of these people home, don't we? Well, 300 men, I guess it depends on how many people are in the Midian army, right? Well, God sends Gideon sneaking over into the Midianite camp to find out some information. All right, there they are. Here's the Midianite camp. So Gideon goes and he checks it out and he finds out how many people are in the Midianite army. Okay, let's find out. So Gideon and his assistant went down to the edge of the enemy camp. Verse 12 says, The armies of Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east had settled in the valley like a swarm of locusts. Their camels were like grains of sand on the seashore. Too many to count. Uh, Gideon has 300 soldiers. And they can't even count the camels. This isn't going to go well. Well, in verse 16, it says, He divided the 300 men into three groups and gave each man a ram's horn and a clay jar with a torch in it. Then he said to them, Keep your eyes on me. When I come to the edge of the camp, do just as I do. As soon as I and those with me blow the ram's horns, blow your horn too. All around the entire camp shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. Well, it was just after midnight. Have you ever been up past your bedtime? Past midnight? What's it look like outside? pretty dark, right? It looks kind of like this. <gasps> Oy. Whew. Okay, we've got our flashlights, right? Have you been sleeping and sometimes you hear a noise in the nighttime and it turns out, oh, it's just your cat. It's not a big deal, right? But it startles you awake, doesn't it? Well, Gideon and his 300 men took their flashlights, the torches, 
and their horns, doo -doo -doo -doo, and they surrounded the Midianite camp. It was just after midnight, after changing of the guard, when Gideon and the 100 men with him reached the edge of the Midianite camp. Suddenly, they blew their horns doo -doo -doo -doo, and broke their clay jars. Then all three groups blew their horns and broke their jars. They held the blazing torches in their left hands and the horns in their right hands, and they all shouted, a sword for the Lord and a sword for Gideon. Each man stood at his position around the camp and watched as all the Midianites rushed around in panic, shouting as they ran to escape. When the 300 Israelites blew their ram's horns, the Lord caused the warriors in the camp to fight against each other with their swords. Those who were not killed fled to places as far away as Beth Shittah, near Zareth, and to the border of Abel Manola, near Tabith. The Israelites were victorious. Why were they victorious? Because God was with them. Well, I think that's such an important story to remember. <clears throat> Gideon and his men won, even though there weren't that many of them. Did they even have to raise up their swords to fight? No, they just had to startle them with their lights and uh, with some shouting in the middle of the night. And God caused confusion and they fought against each other. They fought against their own people. God doesn't need great numbers of people in order to be successful. God doesn't need anything in order to be successful, does he? But God wants us to be a part of his story. God wants us to work together with God so we can further his kingdom. And you know what? That reminds me of a Bible verse. If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Romans 8, 31b. With God on our side, it doesn't matter if we have 32,000, 22,000, 10,000, 300, 15, 8, 2. If God is on our side, who can be against us? Boys and girls, God wants you to be a part of his story too. And I hope that you remember that God loves you, that God made you, and God has an awesome plan for your life. See you next time. Thank you.